comedy quiz show, Two for the Money, with Walter O'Keefe taking over for Herb Schreiner for the summer. And now, here's that genial gentleman from Pasadena, the star of our show, Walter O'Keefe. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. This is my eighth week here. This is my last week here. This is my swan song. And you know, the pleasantest thing about it has been the people with whom I've worked. And among the people with whom I've worked, I like nobody better than the contestants. And this being my last night, I want to give away as much money as I can. So, Ken, who have we got to play two for the money? <laughs> Miss B. Gatling, who works in a chemical laboratory. Gatling. And Mr. Ira Millette, who works in a circus. How are you? Very glad to know you, sir. And first of all, what is your pleasure on cigarettes? Now, with, would you like the king size? I have the king size, yes, sir. You'll have the king size? How about you, Mr. Millette? I'll have the king size also. All right. You. Now, your name is Miss B. Gatling. What do you do, B? I'm a chemist. You're a chemist? Yes, sir. You work in a chemical laboratory? Sure do. Who do you work for? I work for DuPont down in New Jersey. Down in New Jersey. Uh -huh. What kind of chemicals do you work on? Nylon or something like that? Mm, no, I work in an explosives plant. We make dynamite. Uh-huh. Dynamite, I'd say, is more of a man's job, isn't it? Well, there are quite a few men working there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't working on a job like that dangerous? Well, they don't get fresh too often. No, I was thinking of the dynamite. <laughs> but you like your work, B, huh? Like it fine. People are wonderful and the pay's good, too. Well, working with dynamite, it should be easy to get a raise now and then. <laughs> how, how long have you been working over in New Jersey, B? Uh, a little more than a year. A little more than a year? I noticed that southern accent. Where are you from? Well, I'm originally from Charlotte, North Carolina. In fact, I just got back from vacation down there. Uh -huh. Did you have a good time? Mmm, lovely. Uh, had a good time. Yeah, laid around the beach and saw... Laid around the beach? Yeah, saw old friends. And what did they think of the effect of being up north on you? <laughs> they said I had a terrible Yankee accent now. I should go <laughs> home. Oh, unquestionably you do. I mean, if, if you had whiskers, you could pass for General Grant, I'm sure. <laughs> you know, B, you're a very statuesque young lady, and now that you've lived up here a year, are you getting used to our way of life up north? Oh, yes, I am now, but I'll be frank with you. At first, I was a little leery about it, because everybody at home told me, oh, you're not going to like it. People are cold and cruel up there. Up there, they are cold and cruel. <laughs> you mean them dar Yankees? <laughs> that's what they said. Well, that's what the Dodgers say about them Yankees, cold and cruel. <laughs> now, they told you that you wouldn't ever get along up here, huh? Oh, I didn't find it true at all. Mm -mm. I wouldn't think you would. How have you found it here? Oh, they said, nobody's going to speak to you on the street. But I said, uh-uh, it's not that way. I don't have any trouble speaking to people. No, I bet you've been <laughs> spoken to on the street in an elevator. <laughs> Whistled at and everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted to ask you one question. Are you familiar with this new argument that Dior, the Frenchman, has got about how long dresses should be? Have you been reading about that? I read a little about it, uh-huh. I think it's a sort of a promotional plan. It's just a gag to sell more merchandise, you know. They get women's dresses like Venetian blinds going up and down, you know. <laughs> no, the, honestly, I swear, the, the more changes that women have in their clothes, the less change Pop has in his pants, you know. <laughs> and I say that from the bottom of my wallet. <laughs> All right, now let's talk to you, Mr. Millette, for a minute. You say that you uh, work in a circus? Yes, sir, Walter. Well, I'm very interested. What do you do in a circus? Well, I'm a trapeze performer. No kidding. You're That's a trapeze? Right. Well, I'm delighted to meet you because I wrote a song called The Man, Man in the Flying Trapeze in 1931, and I never knew it was you. <laughs> Thank I'm you. I'm delighted to know you. How long have you been with the circus? Well, 41 years I've been doing the same act. Well, you look as if it's agreed with you. Does your wife worry about you in this kind of work? No, no, Walter, because uh, we did an act together one time. You and your wife did an act together? That's right. What do you mean? A he and she trapeze act? That's right, Walter. I never heard of such a thing. Did you ever have any, I'd like to know this, did you ever have any quarrels during working hours? No. No, we never quarreled while we were working. I was just wondering, if you started for her thing and she refused to put her hand out, what would happen? Well, well, that'd be a little awkward. How'd you happen to get into the circus business, Ira? 
Well, my father was a trapeze performer. Mm -hmm. He and my mother was married with the circus. Right. So was my grandmother and grandfather. Well, let's see if you guys can win some money here. I think it's high time, and we'll find out what the professor's got in store for you. What do you say, professor? Well, Walter, the, uh, shall I explain the game? It sort of goes yeah. like this. You ask the contestants three questions, and they uh, give as many answers as they can in 15 seconds. But watch out for this buzzer. If they give a wrong answer, or answer out of turn, or repeat themselves, then I buzz. <coughs> and that's through for that round. Mm -hmm. Now, Walter, here's the first question of the first round, and it's worth $5. I suggest we start out with this one. All right. Which one of you two would like to start out? You I start. will. Okay. All right. Five dollars for each correct answer. When the bell sounds, name as many musical instruments as you can that are made primarily of metal. Ready? Trumpet. Chime. Cornet. Trombone. Saxophone. Alto. Uh, French horn. Mm -hmm. Tuba. Uh, xylophone. Clarinet. You had ten correct answers at five dollars each, so in the next round, every correct answer will be worth fifty dollars. <laughs> you got off to a very fast start here, children. <laughs> Good luck to you. There are a number of letters in our alphabet that are pronounced like complete words. For instance, the letter I sounds exactly the same as the word I, E, Y, E, you know? Now, when the bell sounds, name as many letters of the alphabet as you can that sound the same as complete words. Ready? C. Q. I. P. T. O. Uh, A. B. You had eight correct answers at $50 each, so in the final round, every correct answer will be worth $400. <laughs> you know, this is, this is the second time in this series I felt as if I'm on the wrong side of the mic here. <laughs> $400 for every correct answer in this last round. Good luck to you. When the bell sounds, name as many of the nations of the world as you can that are spelled in five or less than five letters. Ready? Um, Asia. Peru. Oh. Uh, these have to be uh, uh, nations. Now, we'll just go Not on continent. from there. Not continents, but just nations. countries. We'll go on from there. Uh, um, Peru. Chile. You had two correct answers at $400, giving you a grand total on a roll gold scoreboard of $800. Now, Ken, who do we have to play to for the money? Walter, I want you to meet Miss Janice Botts, an engaged girl from Lodi, California, and Mr. Paul James Simpson, from Burlington, North Carolina. Miss Bott, very glad to know you. Glad to know you, Mrs. Simpson. I'd like to start you off favorably and auspiciously here, Miss Bott. What's your pleasure in old gold? King size? King size. And how about you, Mrs. Simpson? King size. King size for you, too. All right. I know you'll smoke them, and I know you'll enjoy them. Now, first of all, Janice, that's your name, right? That's right. Let's talk to you. You're engaged. This, when are you getting married? December 20th. December 20th. Are you practicing up in your cooking? I already know how to cook. In fact, uh -huh. my fiancé has gained between 45 and 50 pounds. 45 and 50 pounds? Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. How much did he weigh when you met him? 165, and he weighs 215 now. Mm -hmm. Are you sure you're engaged to the same man? <laughs> it no. sounds like some fat fella sneaked in when you weren't looking. No, he works hard, and he's pretty much all muscle. 212 pounds is a big boy. Has he got any fat at all? No. All muscle? Mm -hmm. what is he, who does he work for? American Can Company. I see. Well, I guess you need muscle there, all right. I don't know. Where are you going to live after you're married, Janice? Back of an A&P store? No, we we'll probably live in Oakland. In until, Oakland. Until huh? he graduates from college in June. All right, now, Mr. Simpson, let's find out about you. You're from Burlington, North Carolina, huh? That is correct. And are you a native? I was born there. Well, that's my answer. <laughs> are you married, Paul? Yes, sir. 
Yes, sir. I see you snap to attention there. Your wife must be listening, huh? She is. I say, how long are you married, Paul? 24 years come this December. Well, I can't come in December if you'll make it to February. <laughs> Making February, I'll probably be there. Do you have uh, any children? Five, sir. Five? Uh, what ages are the five? 15, 17, 19, 21, and 23. <laughs> 15, 17, 19, 21, and 23. A child every other year, huh? You sound like a charter member of the Odd Fellows, boy. <laughs> What do you do for a living in Burlington, Paul? I'm a city mail carrier, sir. A mailman? Uh, you have a city route or rural? City route. Ah, uh, that's pretty tough work. How do you get around on a bicycle? No, sir, I don't sit down. I walk. You walk? You deliver mail on foot. Ever have any unusual experiences in your line of work? Not many. I've been bitten by dogs 15 times. <laughs> 15 different places, too? No, the pesky rascals pick out about the same place every time. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder you don't sit down on your job, no. Do you get much time for yourself, Paul? I mean, do you have any hobbies that you can indulge? My hobby is long-distance running. Long-distance running? Where do you run? I ran across the United States twice from Los Angeles to New York. Gee, for a mailman, you had some route there, kid. <laughs> I am astounded by that. Have you got any other activities with your running? Um, uh, only... I'm a, a walker. You're a I, walker? Yes, sir. Have you ever had any shorter races than across the country? Yes, I raced 144 miles once. Who did you run against? A horse. A what? A horse. A horse? Yes, sir. Who won? I beat him by 25 miles. <laughs> 25 miles? Yes, mm -hmm. He sounds like every horse I ever bet on in my life. <laughs> All right, Paul, let's get on with the game here and provide some money for you. P Professor, what do we have here for them? Let's start with that, shall we? All right, and may I ask what, uh, which one of you would like to start? Here. <laughs> All right, he's going to run away with the money here for $5 each answer. When the bell sounds, name as many things as you can that have zippers. Ready? Uh, pants. Uh, bathing suits. Shoes. Uh, 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 underwear. Uh, coat. Uh, pajamas. Sweater. Um... Oh you had seven correct answers at five dollars each, so in the next round, every correct answer will be worth thirty-five dollars. <laughs> Congratulations, and here is your second question. Thirty-five dollars for every correct answer. This question is an alphabet game on things that grow out of the ground. When the bell sounds, you, Paul, name something that grows out of the ground that begins with the letter A. And you, Janice, then name something that grows out of the ground that begins with the letter B. And so on, as far down the alphabet as you can go. Ready? Sorry, Paul. You had no correct answers in the second round, so in the final round, every correct answer will still be worth $35. Well, kids, good luck to you on this one. You certainly need to pick up time here. Noodle, N-O-O-D-L-E, is one of many English words that end in the letters D-L-E. When the bell sounds, name as many words as you can that end in D-L-E. Ready? Noodle. Noodle. Double? <coughs> double? Now, that's B-L-E. I'm yeah, awful sorry. Right. Doddle? Oh, I thought he said doddle. I'm double, sorry. I, double? Double. I'm very sorry, Paul. Let's find out what the score is, Kenneth. You had two correct answers at $35 each, giving you a grand total on a roll gold scoreboard of... $70. <laughs> All right, now, Ken, who do we have next to play two for the money? Who are the next two contestants?
Walter, I want you to meet Mr. Herb Schreiner from Indiana, who is in television. Yeah. And Mr. Fred Allen, an unemployed gentleman from Boston. Yeah. <laughs> well, I want to say the quality of the contestants is deteriorating here. You two look like a couple of extras from Buana, believe me. Buana Devil. Now, may I ask you this? First of all, Mr. Schreiner, uh, you say you're from Indiana. What is your preference on old golds? Would you like the king well, size or the or the uh, regular? I think I'll take the long ones there. Excuse me. Uh, you take the long uh, ones here. Yeah, I'll tell you, winter's coming on here, and I might need the extra ashes on my driveway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, Mr. Allen, yes. which size would you like, the uh, regular size or the king size? Well, I think I'll take the king size, too, Mr. O'Keefe. I'm nearsighted, you see, and with the regular cigarette, I'm always lighting my finger. <laughs> I think the king size will There you are. Time. Thank you very much, sir. Now, uh, let's find out something about you, gentlemen. Mr. Schreiner, you say you're from Indiana. Whereabouts? Well, the whole thing. <laughs> uh, exactly whereabouts? Well, it's a, it's a small town, uh, Walter. It's uh, not on the uh, map. It's not on the map? No, uh, it's uh, between two towns that are on the map, though. Okay. <laughs> I must drop in sometime when I'm passing through. Uh, what do you have there in the town? Anything exciting, Mr. Schreiner? Oh, nothing much. I mean, there's, uh, there's, uh, well, there's nothing, I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> well, well, give us an uh, example of the what, best nothing you have. Well, it's, it's, just, it's just that there's a lot of it, and we all get in on it. I mean, <laughs> you know, we, we have a little statue, I and mean, we have a little statue, a very small one, uh, really? Fred. It's just a... Well, we had to get a small one. We were sort of hard up. We only got one pigeon. Oh, well, naturally. Uh, one pigeon. pigeon. Let's see, uh... Maybe I won't drop through on my way. Now, Mr. Allen, tell yes. us about you. Uh, what is your uh, occupation? You say you're not working. I'm unemployed presently, but I have some prospects, Mr. O'Keefe. I'm so happy, uh, Mr. Allen. Well, I'm glad I rejoiced in your happiness, too. <laughs> I, uh... I am, uh, I am promised employment very soon. As a matter of, uh, I'm going to have a television show very shortly. Oh, I'm delighted to hear that. If but these Fred... two people are, re are reliable, you know. I that that. But Fred Allen, you're a big star. I'd like to know, what are you doing as a contestant? Well, I'm a big contestant, too, Walter. <laughs> I... No, I tell you, uh, I'm working for the old gold people, and they wanted me to learn television from the ground up, you see, I... right from the very bottom. I... And they started me out uh, picking uh, tobacco out on the fields for two weeks, <laughs> and then they moved me into the factory for a while. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, really, it was, uh, 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 my, uh, my progress was phenomenal. I was in the factory uh, during a, a rainstorm, and my function was taking the regular cigarettes and pulling them out to the king size. <laughs> and then they zoomed me up to a contestant tonight, you see. And next week, I'm starting on this uh, uh, program uh, with my own program called Judge for Yourself. At well, this Mr. Time. Allen, on behalf of everybody... We certainly wish you the best of luck. Now, Herb, what happens to your show, too, for the money? Well, uh, I just forgot now. I was so excited over Fred's yeah. good fortune, I forgot what's happening to me. <laughs> but uh, I, I tell you the truth, we're switching over. We're switching to another uh, network. Another network? Well, you uh, better write the folks back home, then, and tell them your new address so they well, can see you. it's going to be bath night. Saturday night, we'll be on. Folks mm -hmm. can sit right in the tub and just reach out and turn our set on. Yeah, we'll be on there. And, of course, there's no, there's not much television in my hometown. They don't, no. they don't get the show. It, I just found it out. I was home, and there's one set there. Really? Fred. Just yeah. one set in one the whole set. Thing. It was sort of sad. An old gentleman bought it from Sears Roebuck. Uh -huh. It was, uh, was just a great big, it was one of them big 30-inch uh, hole uh, right in the front yeah. of it. It was a uh -huh. big set. And uh, he didn't get any program at all. He just looked at it and finally passed on. It was sort of sad. And, uh, well, he didn't know, uh, he didn't know. It was sort of sad, actually. It was, uh... Uh, he was sitting there, and he didn't know what to do. Then the set was so big, he just buried him in it. Of course, he looked so good looking out of there that they just left him around about a month. <laughs> it was wonderful. He had picked up two sponsors before they could stop him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, thanks a lot. Now, how did they know he wasn't Ed Sullivan in there? <laughs> That's how he got the sponsors. I never thought. Oh, of I see. Way. That's right. <laughs> now, gentlemen, it's time we got to play the game. Good. And uh, you get five dollars for each. Which one of you wants to lead off? Well, I'll start uh, first. I'm older and I may not be around as long. <laughs> well, here's your first question, and I want to have you listen very carefully, gentlemen. 
There are many different letters of the alphabet in alphabet soup. Uh -huh. But they're all jumbled up. Yeah. Now, for $5 an answer, I want you to give me as many as you can remember of the letters of the alphabet. But here's the catch. They must be in correct alphabetical order. Ready? Oh, Could we hear the yeah. question? Do you understand the question? question. <laughs> it's loaded to me. Yeah, In answer. correct alphabetical order. Ready? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, K, K L, M, M, O, P, uh, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z, A, B, W, C, D, I'm sorry, there's a repeat there, Walter. They repeated it. <laughs> <laughs> he was going so well, too. So well. You couldn't do the, okay, other, the let, same let, question with consomme by any means. No. no. <laughs> Let's find out how you did do on that question, gentlemen. Sure. Uh, how did they do, Ken? You have 26 correct answers at $5 each, though in the next round, every correct answer will be worth $130. All right. That's not bad. You're off to a pretty fair start. 130 uh -huh. in answer. If you do as well in the next round, every correct answer will be worth $3,380. Yeah. And if you do as well as that in the third round, you'll have a grand total of $87,880. Oh, now, wait a minute. Just a minute, Mr. O'Keefe. I can't take that money, Herb. No. It was all right. Look, when I was out of work, when I wasn't working, I could afford to win that kind of money. But now I'm going to work next week, you see, and with this $85,000, this will put me in another bracket. Well, this can break me, Herb. No, I don't think it's good, Fred. I'll tell you, let's leave the money here and let the sponsor pay oh, the no, that's a great idea. idea. No, but you can't great. do you that. Are, You've got to lawyer, accept the money, you gentlemen. Can. I'm sorry. <laughs> And now, here once again is Walter O'Keefe. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I have been around television a couple of years, but this is the first job that I've enjoyed thoroughly, and I leave it with reluctance and with great good feeling. As a matter of fact, two weeks from today with my boy Anthony, I hope to be on the beach at Waikiki in Honolulu, which is a good reward for my work here. And you know, they have a wonderful word out there. I learned it last year. It's aloha. It's one of the strangest words I ever heard because it means love, it means greetings, it means farewell, it means God bless you. And I offer that all to you. Aloha to all of you. I hope I'll see you soon again. And Herb, come on out here, lad. I want to talk to you. I got the chance before we say anything else I want to thank you for the wonderful job you did on two for the money you took such wonderful care of it our clock still works <laughs> and, uh, the doctor's mustache hasn't lost anything and we're, we're everything is secure and, and everywhere I traveled this summer folks said Walter O'Keefe is doing a swell job and I personally want to thank you for it Herb, that's I very generous a, and I'm very very grateful hope now have a fine time I in think Honolulu. I think these guys would like to know exactly what you're gonna do so will you tell them spell it out in one word well, after another we're gonna switch over to another network the name of which uh, escapes you at the moment. Well, it don't escape me. I remember it very good. It's CBS. I mean, it's <laughs> CBS. But uh, I'll tell you why I said that. Because that kicked it. I could have said that we were going to be on following Jackie Gleason, but everybody knows everybody knows what station he's on, so I might as well be honest, haven't yeah, I? Yeah. We're, we're going to be on there next Saturday, two for the money. We're going to have a lot of fun. I've been away traveling around the country, and I, I guess I've got some new questions all worked up to ask the folks. Well, we got some old money left around here. Did you leave us some money? Did you we leave left it a little quite bad? a bit, yeah. Well, you know, the interesting part about this tonight is that in this switchover, we don't want the people to get confused tonight, or rather this time spot that you have yeah. been uh, holding down here for us so nicely. Fred Allen has taken over. And would, would Fred, would you come on back and tell the folks yourself what you're going to do? I tell you, uh, we just had a phone call. Uh, Arthur Godfrey's complaining about the word aloha. He claims that he's been using I that. Been. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you use that, Walter. I'm terribly sorry. And he's also thanking her for mentioning the other network because yes. uh, he's familiar with that outfit. But we're going to be here next week with Judge for Yourself. It's a, a nice show. I hope it's going to be turn out to be well. 
uh, to be a good show, and all I can say to you is judge for yourself. I'm going to Honolulu, Fred. Good luck. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Herb. Thank you, Walter. Well, I'll be Fred. here next Tuesday, so I'll get ready. I'll clean the place up, and I'll stay here. I'll be ready.